It's been a strange year so far this 2020. We're going to catch up with St. Lucie County Commission Chair Kathy Townsend next on Inside St. Lucie. Welcome to Inside St. Lucie, SLC TV's monthly government affairs show. I'm your host, Eric Gill, Communications Division Director for St. Lucie County. And on today's show, we're going to sit down and catch up with St. Lucie County Commission Chair Kathy Townsend. But before we meet our guests, here's some upcoming events and announcements from the Board of County Commissioners. St. Lucie County has opened four of its six branch libraries for walk-in visitors. The Lakewood Park Branch, Morningside Branch, Susan Broom Kilmer Branch, and the Paula A. Lewis Branch Library are now open Tuesday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Staff is working hard to reopen the Hurston Branch and the Port St. Lucie Branch Libraries later this month. However, all six branch libraries continue to provide curbside pickup service. For details, visit stlucieco.gov library. Are you or your business still feeling the economic impact from COVID-19? St. Lucie County has created a website with all the available resources to help you and your local business. Visit recoverstlucie.org to find out how you can apply for CARES Act funding from St. Lucie County and our partner agencies like the Economic Development Council, Children's Services Council, and the United Way of St. Lucie County. Now for the latest updates about all St. Lucie County Commission meetings, workshops, and events, be sure to visit our website at stlucieco.gov. And if you'd like to be added to our press release distribution list, send us an email at slctv at stlucieco.org. We also hope you'll follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're going to take a quick break. Before we do, we're going to check in with the latest economic development stats with another episode of St. Lucie Works. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact tourism. Bed tax revenue in June dropped by 22% compared to 2019. Overall building activity increased by 22% in June compared to May, with 1,141 permits issued. Revenue for that same time increased by 33%, generating more than $312,000. Along with new construction, the housing market continues to fight off the pandemic. According to the Florida Realtors Association, the median home sale price in St. Lucie County in June was $244,900, up 4.2% from last year, while condo values slipped slightly by nearly 1.7%, with the median price at $172,450. St. Lucie's unemployment rate dropped in June to 10% compared to May's 13.8%. Statewide, the unemployment rate was 9.4%. Because of COVID-19, the Treasure Coast had a decrease of 3,400 jobs, or 6.3% over the past year. The biggest impacts were to the leisure and hospitality industry with 1,300 less jobs, trade, transportation, and utilities, other services, and government agencies with 400 less jobs in each sector. If you work for a local business looking for skilled or trained labor, be sure to contact the staff at Career Sources. They can assist your company with its recruitment and training needs. And they now have CARES Act funding available to help you with on-the-job training. If you're an individual looking for work, they can help you as well. Visit the Career Source online at careersourcerc.com or call 1 866 for you to hire. Welcome back to Inside St. Lucie. I'm your host, Eric Gill, and I'm joined by St. Lucie County Commission Chair Kathy Townsend. Commissioner, thank you for joining me. Good afternoon. I'd shake your hand. We're keeping I, the, we the have six to have foot distance. Dis yes, we, we took did. our masks off, so we're keeping the distance in <laughs> place, which it seems to be having an effect. The numbers are going down. Yep. At I least agree. in the right Now the schools are open back up. By the time this ends airs, we may see another spike or so, like Martin County did. but. Um, it seems to be things are going well and people are complying and, and businesses are starting to reopen. Um, well, some are starting to reopen, some are not. The sad thing is that three out of 10 in the uh, restaurant industry are not reopening. Some sure. of those have not been able to, even with the grant funding and the available funds. However, the county does have our CARES Act out there to help the businesses, the recovery, stlucie.org. So that's a good thing. If you're a business, make sure you use email and go on that website that's yeah. very important and it is more than just businesses now we're offering uh, uh funding to nonprofits right. and religious organizations as well as individuals right. which the individual assistance was the first we rolled out you know over three thousand applications i think in the first few weeks so yeah so it's, it's good that there is some funds available out there start you know helping people but um you know the freestanding bars aren't open yet 
Um, I know I recently just took a little trip for a couple of days south with my family and it's just as devastating to the south as it is here. I think actually when I came back, um, I'm, I'm proud to say that I think we're doing it right in St. Lucie County. Yeah. Everything that I witnessed where we went, uh, it was a lot more grave than I think we have going on here in St. Lucie County. St. Lucie County, when I go out there and I talk to the businesses, they have figured it out. They know what works for them. Each individual restaurant is doing it differently. They're not all doing it the same. You know, like the city of Fort Pierce has added the outside dining. Some of the beach places have done that. So I think I do think that our restaurants um, are doing much stronger here in St. Lucie County than they are to the south. Yeah, and, in, 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 and you mentioned that too, like the restaurants and the bars. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those um, requirements weren't us. You know, it wasn't St. Lucie County that no. shut down the bars it was or the, the craft state. breweries. It was the state. Exactly. Yeah, it was, so. and, and that's the thing. You know, there's a lot of confusion. There's so much going on with COVID. Like I just came from the tourism uh, meeting. And even with that, there were some restaurant owners in there. And there was just so much miscommunication and you don't really know what to believe and I've had a lot of people actually reach out in the last two weeks over just the mask ordinance they don't understand that you know when Mr. Tipton put that in that does go every 30 days 30 days 30 days yeah. but when the board decided to make it an ordinance, ordinance and they said in the ordinance that it was in effect until the governor released us from the state of the emergency it wiped out what Mr. Tipton sure. had done. And so then, now what's in effect is the mask mandate's in effect until the governor removes us from under the state of the emergency. Yeah. So, you know, it's still, it's just an education process and letting everybody understand where we are. And, you know, you explain that they understand. And for the most part, I think everybody's comprehending. I think there was a lot of anxiety in the beginning, you know, businesses thought they were gonna be closed down if they didn't like a mandate you have on sure. a mask. And they didn't understand the medical exemptions and the church exemptions and you know there were some changes midstream for gyms so there's a lot of moving parts to all this but i do think that we have figured it out pretty well here like i said i um it, it was an educational purpose for me to be gone for a couple of days with my family to see because yeah. i went through four counties oh wow and um i have to say i'm really really proud of what we've done here and it was yeah. nice to come home i mean not one time did i have a good meal my lodging was not nice. Really? And I, when I came back, I was like, we really do live in paradise. Yeah. And when first time we, we got back, we went to Pineapple Joe's and had dinner. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have great food. We have great people that own the little mama pops. We've got the charm. Yeah. We have it all. This really is our paradise. Yeah, that's my first one. We I did not get out of, I don't think I left the county this whole summer. <laughs> um, we were supposed to do a road trip to Michigan for my nephew's wedding and it got scaled back. And, and my family was a little nervous about, you know, driving you know, with me in, in the car, stopping everything, you know. Yeah, we, no, so we, we end up not canceling, you know. But we have done some Friday, I've been taking Fridays off and we've gone snorkeling at State Park or, you know, mm -hmm. I've been trying to. And there, you know, well, that's what I did. I haven't had a vacation in four years. Yeah. And so my uh, son's birthday was the 19th. And so we decided that we we're gonna take a little trip and my 10 year old grandson made his first dive, caught his first lobster and nice. It was, it was a memory, you know, yeah, it was yeah. something, even though the lodging wasn't the best and the food wasn't the best, um, my, it's a memory yeah. that I get to cherish for the rest of my life with my grandson. I mean, so this, this, it's all good. There's always something wonderful in everything that you do. Yeah, this is the first mini season in like 14 years. I actually didn't get out and die. My husband went and didn't, they got two lobsters. Like that was so But shocking. the visibility was great. This I know, season, it was so. visibility's there, but the lobsters just weren't. Yeah, that happens. It's, just, it's secular. But you mentioned tourism and I wanted to ask, because I know we've had a lot of, baseball tournaments the last couple weeks we have. Um, which the, is good for mm -hmm. you know the economy there. the sports commission is doing really well with that and what they've done is they have went out and done things just really unique what they've done is they've removed some of the bleachers and they're letting the families come in and put up their own tents and they're saying you stick together with your family and bring your little fold out chair in your tent mm -hmm. get out of the shade and so it's worked and that they're finding that the families actually really like that better than the stands Nice. So that might be one of the new norms too coming up Sure. because they're really liking that because they're able to spread out. And if you're going to do any sport, what one could there be any better? I mean, baseball, you've yeah. got the field all the way around to be golf. able to set up your own little thing. Well, golf. <laughs> but you know, even the golfing industry has done that. They're yeah. going to put the shields in between the riders on the golf carts yeah. to be able to do that. So people are really thinking outside the box. They're being creative with how things can continue on. Yeah, yeah. And, and the numbers, while they're down somewhat in tourism, which is kind of to be expected, they're really not tragic. Obviously, May and, we, you know, we're down, but I noticed the, the July, August numbers weren't really our, our Our numbers in St. Lucie actually have come back higher than we were projecting. Yeah. 
Uh, we have not been affected as bad as we thought we were going to be, which is a good thing. Sure. Um, you know, but we have a lot of, you know, the fishing and the diving and stuff like that here. Our water, I think, saves us on a lot sure, of things. Sure, absolutely. And in campgrounds right. and RV The Savannah's and campground stays, yeah. you know, they stay busy. You know, we, we don't have enough sites there. We really need to really consider moving that forward and putting more sites in there and possibly doing some more sites out at our fairgrounds. Yeah, yeah. And then those uh, venues are starting to open back up. Uh, mm -hmm. The fairgrounds is going to start hosting events again. And they are. We have um, the gun show coming in September. We have uh, a nonprofit that's doing the barn sale out at the fairgrounds in September. That's, that's an event. You have uh, the Humane Society's fur ball, the blue jean ball, mm -hmm. coming up uh, in September. That's going to be um, at the Pelican. But, yeah. but still, events are going to start to happen a sure. little bit because they know that it's 50% capacity, you know, masks, you have to have hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. You know, they know all the protocol that has to be put into place for that. Sure. So it's, it, it is nice, I think, to start to see some things start to come back because I think people are getting a little bit rambunctious just having to stay closed up all the time. Sure, and now with the kids and back school, in schools, yes. yeah. So yeah, need, the new need. charter school had an amazing day yesterday. I spent the day out there with them. They had a flawless uh, day. Pickup was a little bit it pick rough, always rough to pick the up the first day, day. but you know they rectified it with the sheriff's department right away. The the resource officer that was there contacted them before all the parents had picked up their kids. They had it rectified. So and 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 talking to some of the school board members and some of the other teachers at the schools, they all had really good days. I know the kids are great to be. You know they're glad to be back. Yeah. My grandkids last night called, and so things are starting to open up. Things are starting to get back to normal. Yeah. Now. I imagine when you started this year, you didn't expect us to be where we are, both, you know. I don't think anybody did. Sure. Tell us, because it is coming up at the end of the fiscal year, when we went through the budgeting process, and I know the board was able to implement a millage decrease, and the trim notices are going out, and folks are getting those, but let's talk a little bit about, you may see, you still may see a tax increase, even though the millage rate went down. Well, and, and that's true, and the reason why is, so property, we did decrease it. I don't think we decreased it enough, but we have decreased it. Uh, so what happens is homestead property is maxed out at 3%. So the value of the properties have come back at 6.5%. So with a 6.5% increase in your property, you're only exempted at 3%. Even with a little tenth of a mill going down, you're still going to see an increase sure. of 3% of your property value. So your taxes are still going to go up. So that is a, a lot of misconception, I think, f to the homeowner. You know, whenever they hear, oh, we're lowering the taxes, which it is a good thing. Sure. Um, sure. But then their taxes still go up. I just got my trim notice, and I, I was quite shocked, actually. Really? Yeah, because mine my, only went up $100. No, mine went up uh, four, 400 Wow. So. And the other side of that, too, is there's only 30 five percent of the millage rates that the board of county commissioners Correct. control there's still the school board the taxing the fire district the south Florida water management and then if you live in the two cities those as well Well, yeah and you yeah you know, i mean you also have mosquito control mm -hmm. you have the fort pierce farms water district mm -hmm. depending on what part of the county you live sure. in so that's true we you know it's just the bocc we have our line item and if you look at that we're not the highest in the state right but if you look at the overall we are the only county in the state of Florida that has our fire department as our own taxing mm -hmm. authority. So generally in the other counties, their fire department's funded through the BOCC. Sure. So that's a little confusing to people too. So, you know, when you add school, when you add the half a cent sales tax, when you add the Fort Pierce Farm, South Florida Water Management, when you add all of those together collaboratively, we are the highest in the state. Um, and, and, you know, this year was an interesting year because with everything going on through uh, COVID, we still saw property values rising. Mm -hmm. We still saw a six and a half percent increase. And we were able to lower the millage rate some. Uh, our, our departments stood, you know, they didn't, they, they were told, you're not gonna have any increases, right? I, I mean, did you get an increase in your department? Um, staffing wise, yes, but we just stole them from another department. Correct. <laughs> so. so that's what I'm saying. We didn't really add a sure. whole lot of services, yeah. right? So we're still, we're still operating the county with more residents and population here, yeah. but still less staff than what we did back in 08, right? Yeah. 
But, but, you know, the good thing in all of that, too, is we're not really doing a lot of employees physically now because we're able to do a lot more online. We're able to do a lot more from home. And so, you know, we're working smarter these days, too. So what used to take five employees, you can do with two because you can do a lot of things online now, yeah. which, you know. Which that's, uh, you know, just to, to be defensive and why we got the additional staff, be, that, that's one of the things. Yes, it saves um, some resources and staff, but it also, moving stuff online, we have to be cognizant of ADA issues right. and make sure it's accessible to everyone, those with visual or physical impairments that can't manipulate the website. So that's why we got the extra well, webmaster position to help because a lot of that stuff moving online, it takes a lot more manpower now to get it online and make it accessible. But I, but I don't think you need to defend yourself there. You, and, and the reason why I say that is, so, you know, number one, road and bridge. Far that our infrastructure is priority, right? Yes. Outside public safety. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing more important than our law and order, right? So this is a perfect example of why your department is needed because with all the moving parts of everything right now going on, you are the communications of the county. You have to monitor all the social media sites. Yeah. You have to do all the public service announcements. You have to do all of our meetings. You televise everything. Yeah. You have the multiple shows that you put on. They're all educational. Sure. Now we're in an election year. Yeah. You know, for the county to try to educate taxpayers yeah. to be able to be informed, you've taken on the project of doing a candidate form to be yeah. able, the profiles which, you know, there's a lot that really happens in your department. And I'd say that outside Road and Bridge, you're probably the second most important department we have. Not that they're all sure. not important, but, but, you know, your department being in communications and education, yeah. um, I, I don't think you can really put a value on your department simply because people depend on you. They depend on you to get them the information. The, like you said, the website. It's not just putting stuff up on a website. There's ADA compliance sure, to that there's, too, there's blind, back hearing, end stuff back in that I don't yeah, think the general public retention. understands. Yeah. Like you, I think you even assist with public records sometimes, stuff yeah, like we, that. Yeah, all the public records come through come, our office right. first. So, yeah. so that's what I'm saying. There's a lot for a small department with what you have yeah. for all that you do because you cover the entire county. Wow. Um, it, it's a lot. Well, I appreciate that. It Thank really you. is. Y'all do a great job. Thank you. But, yeah, but that, that has, and it's interesting because I did have a resident call, they got their trim notes, and they were upset about the school district rate going up. And, and he said, you know, well, they haven't been in school since March. Their, <laughs> their funding should be down, and, or their, rev, their spending should be down. And I thought, well, yeah, they're saving on gas probably, but at the same mm -hmm. time, the students are getting laptops and you need computer assistance right. and infrastructure. You know, so the money shifts, you know, even though, like you said, we may be saving on physical space, but now we're allocating those resources to better and, use. And it's so. education. You know, the other yeah. thing, too, is people don't understand that through the Board of County Commissioners, we don't regulate the, the school. school board. And that's what we I have no to say on that. Yeah. That's a conversation to have with the school board. It's just like if you're in the city limits or St. Lucie Village, yeah. we always want to leave them out. We don't need to leave them out. Sure. But, you know, they have their own board there, too. So, you know, you have your county tax, but then if you're in the city or of the municipality of, of, of uh, St. Lucie Village, you have another tax on top of your county tax. Yeah. So I really don't know what we can do to be able to educate more because I really do think like Michelle Franklin's office um, does a great job. I think that with what we do and we try to educate you, what you do, putting it out there and you're very responsive. I see the responses that come out on social media. Um, I, I was a little bit disappointed because we were going to do those classes, you know, where people could come and get engaged the citizens academy the yeah. citizens academy and then COVID hit but <laughs> you know I, I admire the people that want to come to those classes and get involved in that because there's one lady that started that course and she's actually reached out to me on Facebook a couple of times following it because what little bit she did learn before it stopped yeah was enough to trigger her to be able to still be involved with questions yeah. so you know it's too bad that we can't have more to a class and to be able to do more of those because I think they're going to be they're going to be full every single time we do yeah, them, yeah. but it's a way for people to really educate themselves and get out there and really understand how government works because, you know, there's just so much that goes into making a decision or into a department that the lay person out there doesn't understand. I mean, I will be honest. I mean, before I sat in this position that I'm blessed to sit in and serve, I had no idea, like, our transportation. Yeah. I thought that was a county thing. Yeah. I thought the county did it. It was the county ran it. The county yeah. was in control, right? I didn't know it was an outside entity that did sure. that. Just something as simple as that. So yeah. 
and even learning now I knew that the school board governed and sure, the sure. South Florida water management I mean I understood all of those but it I really don't know what the answer is to really get out there and be able to educate the and people. And I'm always and, looking for it, you know, because it yeah, is you tough. Are. There's always somebody that falls through the cracks. You know, they're not on social media. They're not on Facebook right. or Twitter or They Instagram. don't get a newspaper. They don't, they don't get don't... Comcast. So they don't get, yeah. the com you know what I mean? So how do you reach those people other than driving around with a megaphone? But, you know. But, you know, even the cities are doing a good job. The city of Port St. Yeah. Lucie, they're doing their Citizens Academy, yeah. you know, yeah. and they, they fill up every single time they do it. And I've talked to several residents that have done that and they're really really informed and educated yeah. you can tell the ones that have been through that sure and i did city of fort pierce's one yes. you know, before we did ours and like you said we got about i think five or s out of the seven classes done and we're looking to schedule that again in the fall so if folks want to learn and like you said it will be a limited number of people but you know maybe it's something we do like a tele class you know but then not everybody has computer access and you know yeah i, I before COVID, i had thought about doing a town hall meeting and kind of I used to do those at the League of Women the, Voters. Well, you used to also do the library events. Too, right. Go talk right. to folks at the library. And so I, I had considered doing that, letting people just come and ask questions. But then, you know, COVID hit and whatever. And we're, we're just in really difficult times right now. But, you know, everybody keep the faith. We're going to get through it. God yeah. is good. And it, like you said, we're getting there, and there are there is funds available. The Recover website, uh, recoverstlucy.org, there's assistance available for individuals and businesses, even Something, you know, as we talk about the economy picking back up, um, career source is actually doing now on the job training because there may be people mm -hmm. who had a job and decided, well, I'd rather stay home and be with my kid to do virtual, you know, help them with this. So there may be employment opportunities opening up, but just don't have the skilled labor. And that was something I remember before the pandemic, we right. hear all the time from A1 Trust and Phoenix mm -hmm. Metal, some of the manufacturing companies out at the, out at the airport, good paying jobs. They just don't have the people with the skill set to fill them. Yeah, well, and you know, I I think that once we continue to reopen, because we are reopening more each day, I think. Um, we've done a great job, I think, in the last three years with bringing in the workforce and bringing in uh, the trade schools. We, we, we recognize that not everybody here, I would say the majority of the residents, especially you know in the city of Fort Pierce, they're not somebody that can afford to go to college, and nor do they want to go to college. And so we recognize that and creating the jobs and the manufacturing and doing the trade schools. You know, we had the partnership with Career Source, mm -hmm. we had the partnership with the college to be able to give those young men and women jobs. And then, you know, working most recently with transportation to be able to get them back and forth to work and to implement some more bus stops to get them back to work so they can be successful and live the dream and go out there and not rent but own a home someday. So we were headed in all the right directions. Sure. And I know that we'll get back there. Yeah. I, I really do. I mean, Everything is there. Everything is in place. The stars are aligned. When we get through this, I think that we are going to come out on top stronger than most of the average counties in Florida because we were aligned to be there to begin with, and we were almost there at the top. And even though we have lost a little bit, I don't believe we've lost what other counties have. Yeah, and it was interesting. Uh, NPR had a piece about how the pandemic really hasn't affected the housing market. It and has I've not. seen that, like with the values of the homes. And I have a friend that's a realtor, and you know, a lot of people are looking to move out of big cities right. into more rural. You know, not that we're that rural. We're still three hundred twenty thousand people, but there's still areas where you can get a full acre. Or, we have a lot know. of rural here. We really yeah. do. Our ag land, lands to the west. You know, we have a lot of property out there, and I, I know I talk to the realtors. Yeah. Um, you know, they're the heart of this community. They, you know, they're very important in many ways. And an average house, three bedroom, two bath pool home, three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars and under, is less than twenty-four hours on the market. Yeah. And right now, two weeks ago, one of the meetings I sat in on, there were seventeen ready willing qualified buyers and there was no listings to put them yeah. so our, our real estate market is doing well yeah. and a lot of it is you know the the virus up north has drove people to want to be down here it's hotter weather yeah. like you said it's sprawling you can you know we don't generally do zero lot lines so you know they feel safer here and that's a good thing it's a good thing for our market, it's a good thing for us. The bad thing is the people that do have jobs here and need to live here, we do need to create some more affordable housing for them. Sure. But our real estate's doing well, and we have a couple big projects that are going to be coming up with the county and on uh, 95 Andrea. and Andrea Road. Yep. There's two projects there. 
Um, you know, the one out of Okeechobee has continued to do. There's a lot coming in in Port St. Lucie to the west out there. So yeah, that tradition area is still the where the Copas Nursing still, Home is going. Mm -hmm, you can still, still see. Yeah. That's, there's still a yeah. lot of land available. And even off McCarty Ranch, you know, you, right. you drive down there, there's still a lot of land available. And, and I've seen a lot more in the ag, like out Brock Smith Road mm -hmm. and Trowbridge Road. There's some growth coming in out there um, in our rural areas out there, and families are relocating from the city out there because their kids are now teenagers and they want to do four wheelers and horses and stuff too. So, you know, that's part of the thing too, you know, as Commissioner Hutchison brought up at our last meeting even, uh, you know, with 4-H getting back to normal out there at the fairgrounds and everything. So, you know, I, I don't want everybody to think it's all been dim and gloom because it no, hasn't. No. It really hasn't. And I think that there's been a lot of great things that have come from this too. You know, it's, it's brought our values, I think, back to where we've needed to be with our families and our loved ones and reconnecting with old friends. And, you know, I think realizing how we were allowing electronics to raise our children and the respect of a teacher, I think, coming back to school now a hundred percent of the parents are going to see worth in a teacher yes. and they're going to respect them and love them even more not yeah. that we didn't love them prior but sure. they're going to see their worth because they've had to school their children right yeah. so there's a lot of good things that will come from this i think absolutely well anything else we didn't get to mention before we wrap up i don't show? think so i just want to say you know everybody be safe and just keep doing what you're doing we're headed in the right direction we're all better together and that's a good thing absolutely. thanks for the all the things that you do well thank you don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. Before we do, we're going to check in with another project update, checking out what, how we spent the St. Lucie County sales tax. One benefit of the COVID-19 pandemic was less motorists were on the road. St. Lucie County's public work staff was able to capitalize on that by making significant progress on the long-awaited resurfacing of Prima Vista Boulevard, which is now substantially completed as the contractor CWR Construction, formerly known as Mansell's Tractor Service, has finished the resurfacing from US-1 to Oroso Boulevard. Funded by the voter-approved half-cent sales tax ballot measure in 2018, this $3.3 million project included resurfacing, ADA accessibility improvements along the sidewalk, and drainage improvements such as removal and replacement of culverts. Additionally, an existing loop detection system for traffic signals was replaced with a video vehicle detection system. While this project was originally slated to begin in the summer of 2019, St. Lucie County's public work staff coordinated the timing of this project with the City of Port St. Lucie's opening of the new Crosstown Parkway Bridge to help alleviate traffic congestion since there are a limited number of east-west corridors in that area. Once the Crosstown Parkway Bridge was opened, St. Lucie County began working on Prima Vista Boulevard in October of 2019. Most of the repaving for this project occurred at night to help reduce traffic congestion. To find out more about St. Lucie County sales tax projects, visit slchalfcent.org. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Inside St. Lucie, and we hope you'll tune in again next month. If you have topics or subjects you'd like to see covered here on the program relating to St. Lucie County, give us a call at 772-462-1791 or send us an email at pio at stlucieco.org. And if you'd like to see previously aired episodes of this or other SLC TV programs, visit our YouTube channel at youtube slash I'm your host, Eric Gill. For myself and the staff, thanks for watching.